I'm in South Arkansas. It don't get real cold here. If you live north of us, it gets real cold. I can't help you. I can give you some ideas on how to heat your shop. Man, you better have that dude insulated. South Arkansas, typically down here, it doesn't get really cold. Uh, most days in the winter, we're in the 50s and 60s. Sometimes it drops down in the 30s and rarely into the 20s. In the South, we get kind of goofy when it drops below 40. And you'd be seeing people look like the little kid on Christmas Story with his arms all puffed up and the little jacket and he can't put his arms down. That's what we look like when it starts getting below 40 around here. You mentioned the S word. To these folks in the South, we lose our minds. We make a mad rush to the grocery store, we will clear out bread and milk for a hundred mile radius around us. If the weatherman starts dropping the S word around these parts, it's serious business. How you doing? I'm Matt with 731woodworks.com. Today, we're gonna talk about how to heat a woodworking shop. There's several ways to do it. Let's go over it. I wanna know what you heat your workshop with. Drop a comment below, let me know that so others can see and maybe that'll help somebody out. Yep. If you like this shirt, I actually bought it from Mardell's.com, but Caruso.com has it also. First, we'll talk about how I heat my woodworking shop, and then I'll give you some ideas on how to heat your woodworking shop if these methods don't work for you. First off, this shop is a garage, so I have a garage door, and then it's about 10 foot ceilings in here, and then we got about a 22 by 20, so it's actually a really big space to try to heat. When it drops below about 40, I start turning on heaters out here. So us folks in the South has a little bit of benefit. The only drawback to that is when it gets summertime, it's so hot you can't breathe. The humidity and the heat, that's another story for another day. We're talking about heating. This is a Lasko, L-A-S-K-O, ceramic heater. It blows hot air. I bought this at Walmart for like 40, 50 bucks. For the most part, I use this and I use radiant heater you see here uh, when I'm working out or when I'm in the shop. If I was choosing between one or the other, I would go with the radiant heater because you could put it fairly close to you, you know, six, eight feet away, and you can actually feel the heat. That's a radiant heater. I've got it, man, that thing's about six foot away from me and I can actually feel the heat coming off of it right now. See, the way that works is that radiant heater heats objects, whereas this little hot air blower <laughs> heats the air for the most part. This is a little ceramic heater I bought at Walmart. It's a mainstays brand. It's on high. If you touch those grates, it's gonna burn you. But sitting right here, man, it's putting off a lot of heat really close to me. So if I'm working in the wood shop, especially if I'm working at my workbench and I just wanna stay warm, put this thing on an extension cord, a good thick, heavy gauge extension cord. Don't use those cheap little thin ones. You're making me, you'll, make, you'll cause a fire. A good high quality extension cord if you're gonna put these things on an extension cord. It's really not recommended you do that, I don't think. But anyway, put those on, get that thing six, eight feet away from you. As long as you're not throwing sawdust on it, it'll keep you warm. Now, if you're making sawdust, I don't recommend this thing because if you're making sawdust, it can actually get down in there. It's probably not gonna catch on fire unless you get a bunch of sawdust around it, but it's possible, but it's gonna stink up the place because sawdust is gonna get in there, start smoking things up. So that's typically what I use to heat the area up while I'm working. If, if I'm moving around or working out or whatever I'm doing out here in the garage or the shop, if it's above 50 degrees, I can be comfortable in a short sleeves and jeans. If it gets real cold, we're talking if it's down in the 20s, I start lighting up this propane patio heater. Now, if I do that, I'm gonna crack that garage door about that much, let some of that fresh air in. You also need a CO2 monitor, carbon dioxide monitor. You've got an open flame up there, using propane. These are not meant for indoor use. Let's get that out there, they're not. But if it's really cold, that's what I use to knock the chill out of the air. If you see many of my videos, you've seen this in the background. I don't use this dude very often. Because it puts out that propane odor, sawdust gets on top up there, kind of smokes a little bit when you turn it on. But if it drops below 30, brother, this one's coming on. I'll crack that garage door a little bit, let this thing heat up. It puts out a ton of heat really fast. As you can see here, took about 20, maybe 30 minutes to heat up the garage this morning, more than 10 degrees. It went from 50 to 60 pretty quick with this one running and the other two electrics running. After this thing about 20, 30 minutes runs, knocks the chill out of the air, turn it off. It's done. I don't want to keep this thing running for hours on end. Now back when I first started, I would run this, but it gets expensive because those propane bottles are 15 to $20 for a refill bottle, depending on where you're buying them at in South Arkansas. Walmarts are always cheaper, 
about $15, $16, whereas the service stations, gas stations, things like that, if you're gonna swap them out, $20, $22. Another thing about these is when it gets really cold in the winter, if you don't already have a bottle or two on hand, they sell out really quick around here because I told you we freak out when it goes below 40 in South Arkansas. We hate the cold. So you need to be prepared if you're gonna be using this in the general South area. One thing to note, my ceilings are, gosh, they're 10 or 12 feet tall. We gotta, we gotta know that, don't we? I've got four foot of clearance above this thing. If you've got low ceilings, don't put this thing in there because it's gonna cause a problem. And it could be a catastrophic problem as well. 11 feet. I have 11 feet ceilings, 11 foot ceilings, 11 feet ceilings in this garage. So it's really tall. I've got a lot of clearance space above this. Make sure there's clearance space around this as well. That thing's an open flame, man. And you're in a wood shop. Fire and wood burn stuff. So be careful with that. The last thing you wanna do is catch your wood shop on fire. Use extreme caution when you're heating your shop. Like I said, I use that thing 20, 30 minutes max, turn it off, make sure you got plenty of ventilation coming in. I know it seems counterproductive to crack that door a little bit, but you gotta have that fresh air coming in when you're burning stuff like that. On these electric heaters, I can let, once I knock the chill out of the air, I can let that electric heater run and it'll keep the shop warm enough to work in. All right, so it's 6.46. I finished my workout right up. I'm gonna let, I've turned that patio heater off as you saw about 30 minutes in you got it up to 60 it's still holding right there close to 60 with, with just that radiant heater and this little oscillating heater that's just blowing hot air and so i'm gonna let this one stay running while i go eat breakfast get a shower that kind of thing before i come back out and start uh, making another video so i'm gonna see how well the temperature holds in my garage with just that heater going and i will be keeping a check on that i don't just let this thing run if i'm not out here so It only dropped five degrees in the last two hours. So if you're moving around the shop, it's gonna be perfectly acceptable. This morning while I was working out, I did a little test and used my heating method to see how much I could heat it up. It was about 32 degrees outside. So when I first got out here about 5.30 this morning, the temperature was about 48, 49 degrees in the, in the shop. One thing that helps keep the shop at a decent temperature, no matter if it's summer or winter, is I've insulated that garage door. So I bought this foam insulation. It's like maybe three quarters of an inch thick. It's full on both sides. I just cut it to fit in between these rails. You have to take these braces off to get it in there. I started to do over the windows too, because that's a lot of heat that comes in during the winter, uh, summer, but I like that natural light coming in. So I haven't covered it up. That has helped quite a bit. I really didn't think it would help a lot and it doesn't like make a giant difference, but it does make a difference. That sun, it's facing the east, so the morning sun hits it all the way up until noon during the summer. Uh, again, another video on how to keep the shop cool in the summer. But in the winter, it does keep that cold from coming through as well. I think it, it, it makes quite a bit of difference actually in the winter more so than the summer, oddly enough. Another thing is you wanna make sure when the door is shut in the winter that you've got a good seal on the bottom. If there's a gap and that seal's broken somewhere, you may wanna get that replaced. That'll help keep that air from coming in here when you got your heat on. Another thing I do is I use this fan that I got at Atwoods. It's just like a $30 fan. Point that thing pretty close to straight up when I'm, cause these ceilings are really tall at 11 feet. That fan blows that air up and circulates it around. Hot air rises, we learned that in kindergarten. Make sure you circulate that air. That'll help warm things up faster than not circulating the air. And it helps just, it keeps the temperature, overall temperature in the shop uh, at a consistent temperature. Did I say temperature too much? Ideally, I would like to have an electric garage heater, the kind that hang up in the corner. They run off of 220. I think those would put out enough heat to keep this garage warm, this wood shop warm this gym warm, I mean, whatever I'm using it for at the time. I could put it right up there. The ultimate goal, right up there. I could put it right in that corner and move that shelf out of the way. And uh, I think that'd be a good spot for it. The ultimate goal is to get a mini split in here at some point, but those things are so expensive. Y'all know I still got my lunch money from the third grade. I do not like spending that money on that kind of stuff. For the most part, year round is fairly comfortable in here. I may sweat a little bit. I don't have a problem with that. Make it a little chilly. I don't really have a problem with that. I don't like being cold, cold, and I don't like being hot, hot. 
a mini split would solve that. I've seen tons of DIYers put those in. Seems like a good fit for me. But those electric garage heaters would be a good option too if you live in a colder climate and you don't actually need more air than you need heat. One of those garage heaters would probably be a good fit for you. They, I think they can run off of natural gas, electric, different things like that. So I went to Instagram, posted all my stories, asked a question, what do you heat your shop with so I could give you some more ideas? Here's the answer. Several electric heaters, patio space heater, just like I'm using, some others are using those. Some say they're in Florida and they don't need no heater. Look at dog. Kerosene heaters and coveralls is one of the, <laughs> is one of the suggestions. Kerosene heaters are good. They burn clean, clean air, so it's not as funky as that propane. I've actually seen some people use the forced air heaters to heat their workspaces. I know a lot of contractors use those. They seem to work fairly well. Again, ventilation's key if it's using propane. Some use kerosene. I'm not sure about ventilation on kerosene. Y'all holler at me because I don't know about that. Drop a comment below. Just there's several ways you can heat your wood shop economically, and there's some that's gonna cost you a little more. That propane's expensive, kerosene's expensive, electric heat's not as expensive, but it doesn't heat as well unless you got one of those big uh, ones that mount in the corner of your top of your garage or whatever. But these smaller floor heaters, they're not meant to heat a 20 by 20 or 25 by 20 by 11 feet tall space. They're just not meant to heat up that space. However, they will hold the temperature if you've got it well insulated. Heating up the air with no air coming in uh, no majority of air coming in. I mean, a garage door is going to leak a little, but it, it works pretty well. Again, I'm in South Arkansas, so these tips and tricks are going to work for you if you're in the South. If you're in Maine, Lord help you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't think I could live up there as cold as it gets, but I do appreciate those who are able to do that, and uh, whew, I can't imagine. I can't imagine temperatures at, you know, days on end below 20, below 30, <laughs> below 40 on days on end, because it does not do that here. If you're in Florida, I envy you, man, because it was it get 70 and y'all start freaking out like we do when it's 40. It just depends on your areas how hard it's gonna be to heat your shop. Hey, I appreciate you watching. Click that box right there to take you to the next set of videos. If you click that box, you know you're getting that virtual fist bump. Also, you can check out that video right there. It's another one of my favorite videos. I appreciate you watching. If you have not subscribed yet, click that subscribe button for me. Thumbs up for me. Also, share on your social media. Thank you.